One hot summer day, 150 years ago, a steamboat was anchored in the middle of the Rio Grande River between Camargo and Rio Grande City. Tied to the flagpole of that boat was a young man who had just turned 20 years old. The flag was Mexico's Republic. Everyone knew Adrian Vidal. He was from the second wealthiest family in Texas, son of Petra Vela and stepson of Mifflin Kennedy. Kennedy was partner of Richard King of King Ranch. By 1865, Kennedy and King owned between them most of the lower Rio Grande Valley on the Texas side of the river. Petra's family and other families of Mexican descent had owned the land long before. But by 1865, Petra was married to Kennedy and leading the project to build the Catholic Church in Corpus. Adrian Vidal had been plenty active already in his short life. He started out as captain in his stepfather's fleet of steamboats plying the Rio Grande. When Texas seceded, he organized as a young teenager his own independent partisan rangers and offered their service to General Hamilton B's Confederate troops stationed in Brownsville. When Union forces threatened to invade Texas early on, he and his men mobilized to defend their homeland. They captured that Union boat. Above all, Adrian Vidal was committed to protecting his homeland and his people on both sides of the Rio Grande. His immediate loyalties were to those Tejanos who described themselves as Defensores de la Frontera. They championed Mexican-Americans in Texas and their relatives living across the river on the Mexican side. His larger loyalty was to defend Republican ideals from imperialists and other threats on both sides of the border. The biggest threat in the 1860s to both republics was the French invasion of Mexico. Napoleon III sent 30,000 troops to overthrow President Benito Juarez and install an Austrian prince, Maximilian, as Emperor of Mexico. Napoleon, nephew of the famous conqueror Napoleon I, especially one of the most prosperous parts of northern Mexico, Tamaulipas and Sonora. No wonder Adrian Vidal was determined to defend Mexico. His father, Lieutenant Luis Vidal, had been assigned to Mexico's northern battalion only months after Texans defeated Santa Ana in 1836, and he participated with distinction in both of Mexico's campaigns to retake Texas. In those two campaigns in March 1842 and again in September 1842, Mexican forces attacked San Antonio intending to restore Mexican rule in Texas. Adrian Vidal's father earned promotion to colonel for his valor during these campaigns. The other threat to Mexico was Confederate collaboration with the imperialists. This news made Tejanos very unhappy with the Confederates. Meanwhile, President Lincoln, Secretary of State Seward, and U.S. Ambassador to Mexico Thomas Corwin had been supporting Mexico's Republic and Benito Juarez against the French and Maximilian. In fact, Lincoln, Seward, and Corwin had also supported Mexico against the U.S. invasion in the 1840s and remained supportive in the 1850s. So when the Union troops prepared an invasion of Texas in November 1863 and promised to help Tejanos defeat the French and imperialists in Mexico, Tejanos believed them and joined the Union. Soon, Tejanos realized that the Union would not help them defend Mexico. Secretary Seward had ordered strict neutrality so as to avoid giving Napoleon III a pretext to declare war against the Union and support the Confederacy. Tejanos got very nervous because they learned that the French were advancing on northern Mexico in the spring of 1864. Marching toward Matamoros and Camargo was none other than Charles Dupin, the dreaded counter-guerrilla leader. He and his men had the worst reputation for committing atrocities. Dupont had been dubbed the Tiger of the Tropics, accused of burning villages and killing people. He hung five men in Tampico's main square. In the summer of 1864, Adrian Vidal sent his resignation to Union headquarters in New Orleans with his commander's approval, and it was approved. But before official notification arrived, Vidal and his men had already rushed to help defend Mexico. Mejia and Dupont were fast approaching. General Thomas Mejia was the top imperialist general and he had been assigned to take Matamoros and control the lucrative cotton trade being smuggled out of Texas. That Rio Grande trade was the lifeline of the Confederacy given that all other southern ports were blockaded by the Union. Kennedy and King made enormous profits from the Confederate cotton trade during the Civil War. Where was Adrian? He was fighting the imperialists, desperately trying to save the Republic from the French and Emperor Maximilian. He had allied his men with Cortina, Escobedo, and other Juarista generals defending Mexico. While the imperialists and the Confederates enjoyed prosperity of the cotton trade, even inaugurating a royal theater in Matamoros, 
Vidal and the Wadistas were living in the open and in mountain hideouts, dodging Tupan, interrupting trade routes, and staging bold raids into imperialist strongholds. Finally, the imperialists caught him. They broke their own laws and international codes of warfare by sentencing Adrian Vidal to summary execution. No trial, no evidence produced, just firing squad. Maximilian did not authorize summary execution of rebels, denying them belligerent status until four months later in the infamous Black Decree of October 3, 1865. Because their move was illegal, they didn't dare kill this American in Mexico, nor could they kill him in the United States. So they put him on a steamboat with his uncle as captain. Immediately, Pedro Vela offered his weight in gold as ransom. Mifflin Kennedy rushed to the boat to stop them, but the imperialist hastened to call forth the firing squad. As they lined up, Vidal tore off his blindfold and uttered one request, for the sake of my mother, spare my face. 150 years ago today, June 14, 1865, Adrian Vidal shouted his last words, loud enough to be heard in this plaza here in Rio Grande City. Viva Mexico! He yelled as the barrage of bullets tore his body and his face. His stepfather took his body home to his mother, and the family erected a tombstone in his honor. Engraved on the tombstone, Aquí yacen los restos del ciudadano Adrian Vidal. Nació el día 9 de mayo de 1845 y falleció en junio a la edad de 20 años, un mes cinco días. Sus padres, esposa, hija y hermanos le consecran este recuerdo a su memoria. Imperialist bullets ended Adrián Vidal's life that day, but his legacy lived on. One year and one day later, on June 16, 1866, Juaristas defeated the imperialists at the Battle of Santa Catrudis. The Juaristas that day included Vidal's men and his allies, including Cortina, Escobedo, and a battalion from Camargo. That Juarista victory forced Mejia to withdraw from Matamoros, liberating Tamalupas. One year and three days later, June 19, 1865, Maximilian was executed and Mexico was free. No more foreign troops ever sought to conquer and rule Mexico again. Vidal's personal legacy also lives on. Two months after his execution, his wife, Ana Chavero de Vidal, gave birth to their daughter. Christened Maria Josefa Ana Vidal Chavero, his daughter chose to bear his name all her life. She renamed herself Ana Adrián Vidal and married Luis Cowan, a Russian immigrant's son, and bore seven children. The imperialists shed Adrián Vidal's blood on June 14, 1865, but they didn't destroy his bloodline. Today, many Texans descend from Vidal, and the Kennedy Ranch Museum of South Texas honors his legacy. His men also deserve credit. These Tejanos risk life, property, and family to protect fronterizos from Tupan and to defend Mexico's republic from Napoleon and Maximilian's imperialists. One of Vidal's men just received recognition from the U.S. Army last year. But let us list them all. Thanks to Jerry Thompson, we have a list of each of Vidal's men. 